Members at Bedboom down to bottom, but now with the Rift, they're going to be able to move to top and GPK. He's got the combo back up. So it looks like it's going to be another kill. Thanks to the use of the Blink Dagger. Save's going to yoink it away, but at least they should instantly refill the mana of GPK. I mean, that's the big thing. We've, we've seen a lot of the kind of cool combos from the Coddle. We haven't seen Tiny too much, but of course, one of the better pairings with the Chakra as well. Yeah, save is warranted for taking that kill. He wouldn't have had that Avatos combo available if not for him, so he can, uh, he can take what he likes. Mm -hmm. And they are able to get the tower off the back of it as well. I mean, they're giving basically all of the, the lane waves to GPK as well, as it looks like they might even make another rotation together back towards the bottom side if they're wanting to open up the map even further for Deucer to just help with taking that tier 1 tower bottom. Almost feels like they might want to set up for that, right? Because you've got the Wisdom Runes coming up in one and a half minutes, and if they really want to keep the pressure up, put the foot on the throat, that's the way to do it. Heritage? He's pretty tanky, man. What the hell? Dragonland strength treads with the Seeds of Serenity was like 1600 health. Mm hmm. Without the power going for a bit. To reveal the gank, although GPK with the Invis wraps all the way around. We'll see a squad deep in enemy territory. Is his FNG going to be able to disrupt it though? Squad falling low. One to the backpack and. GPK is going to be up to a dominating streak. A bit of an extra gold injected to his bank. He might even get FMG as well. The toss is going to be up, sends him packing. So we were speaking about earlier that, you know, Kiyotaka probably top three tinies in Eastern Europe. You asked me, you know, who was you uh, along with world. him. You Did I say in the, the world? world? Okay, yeah. in the world, I would say GPK could be an argument for that as well. Eastern Europe, I don't know what it is, but their tinies are at another level. And, and GPK, he always shines on this hero. And this game in particular is no different. 5-0-4, second in net worth. And if you have a good game on this hero, you can scale and you're a real big issue late game with like scepter and crits a bit there maybe it's gonna be pango going in first and using that as like a bkb response a lot of damage onto toronto tokyo early on they're even gonna put the mystic flare but he's okay now gpk finds an angle with the combo sayushi's falling low not gonna be able to secure the kill for the moment notice just wants to skew a nightfall out of the fight but it's not providing them a whole lot of squad he's stuck in the middle a 1v1 versus gpk should be able to get some distance, though. Not a lot of value out of the double damage here in a very awkward fight for VP. Not the way you were hoping to try and take this roast engagement, and as a result, they're going to have to try and duck and run. Uh, yeah, they just didn't land their spells, and the big plus for Death Boom is that they basically popped nothing. You know, you had Kiritich there just Radiant waiting. He wanted that Stone Gaze popped. He wanted the BKB pop on the Tiny. Nothing happened. I'm sure he was able to reach yeah. it up. It's going to be a big kill. That's a lot of their auras, a lot of the sustain. Yule's going to be able to buy in some time now. Nightfall's going to be in with the Stone Gaze as well. They need to kite the Medusa, but the BKB Kiritich will be enabled to do so. But it's an all-out retreat from VP. And, well, now they can go back in. But boom, they used a decent chunk. Vinci trying to find that opening. They won't be able to follow up, though. So you know, at least we're getting something out of VP. It's taken them a while, but... Get the kill onto pure. Radiance middle tower. Yeah, even under with attack. that Yule Scepter to be able to save Radiant himself from the brunt of the damage tower. coming through from the Eclipse. He still ends up getting taken down just because, again, it's not all on one hero. Like, yes, Kiritich is very farmed, but you've got Magnus dealing a decent amount. You've got the Pango consistently just bouncing around inside of that rolling thunder. And uh, he hit by the, the Stone Gaze full duration, but he was just incredibly tanky off the back of a shield crash. No nullifier buyers on Beth Boom either, really, so he is uh, never really going to feel in too much danger. I like this from Notice as well. It looks like with all the gold he's got saved up, he's going to go into the BKB next. And I, I think this is much needed because of what we... In the past couple of minutes, what we just saw. With the pit to be able to push high ground, it cancels out your potential skill back play to find a way back in. Run away from the, uh, the Rolling Thunder, but they just were in a compromise. Net worth, and that net worth is going to be really pivotal as the though. game goes on. Is they want to try and take the space cow out? No, it's going to be in though. Found GPK. They want to blow him. What is the damage? GPK's gone, and our knife might be in some trouble as well. But do they want to dress the deuce or the rest of the heroes? Again, we've seen prior. GP looking to try and wood as best as they can. Fight off the fight. 
to with everyone else and then leave Nightfall to last. The momentum is completely swung, even though they have this full set of barracks on bottom. We really haven't seen Batboom being able to really crack VP addition out recently. Yeah, they've even got creep still in the base. He's slowly assaulting the buildings, but I mean, it really is off the back of noticed, isn't it? Some of these skewers have been amazing. It's all enabled by FNG. You know, that time around, he went in a little deep. It was under the Dyer's cover of a observer top. sentry combination, top. but I mean, he's just, he's so tanky. There's no boys really, though, to be able to help him out. Plenty of damage. <laughs> You're going to gate in VP pretty far away, but the quick kill. There's going to be no response, so gem picked up. I didn't have their own gem, so that's going to be lovely for them to work with now. And you might Especially need to... Roach pit. Yeah, exactly. You might need to buy back on save to contest it, because FNG with the wraparound. Should try to deny it for... That's not been what has been working for the prior. Notice is in some trouble down to half health. Look at all the crits. Raining in. Notice one mistake, and it's going to cost VP gravely. At least they get the buyback out of the coddle, but yeah, that really hasn't been what's... What's, oh, what's going stuff? on? Smoke on smoke outside the base. So now they have usage. GPK is going to jump in. It's not enough damage for the tree ball at the moment. Some of the crits it's going to rain down. They'll kill off the sky. A great start for Bet Boom, but they did come in pretty heavily. Disjointed between That's the two back. squads, going to be able to get rid of save. A very messy engagement overall, but GPK, <laughs> once again, this time with the crits. They'll hold them into place. The tree volley makes quick work of FNG. And are they considering going high ground 4v4? What's going to stop them? I would say so. I mean, you still, of course, have to worry about the Magnus. He didn't use the RP, but he did use the BKB. So you would have to imagine that maybe they're just going to go for that similar sort of strategy that they had when they were taking the tier 3 bottom. Just have the, uh, the Underlord there, lay down the Pit of Malice, and then what can the Magnus do? No Rolling Thunder to have to concern yourself with. The, uh, the Halberd, such a short range that if you go into it, you're probably going to get Blink kind of tossed back into the meat grinder. It seems like they just want to... Get here 10 geometry class. Oh, the Hex to precast! Save, beautifully done, stops the jump, squad's going to try and attempt. But a BKB from Notice really isn't providing them too Isolated. much. They're going to skewer Deucer in, but I thought doesn't care. Stand strong, Stone Gaze used, who gives a damn? Free set of barracks. No contestion now. And that's the second lane, given up for free, essentially. Of course, no Rolling Thunder to have to deal with again. I mentioned the fact that he didn't go the cooldown, so it's still a good 50 seconds. It's really going to be on the back of Notice once more. Manners out for do so. The Aegis, though. They, they need to get crafty with this. It's currently not working, which is putting Deuce up on the front, and Notice Pro aren't finding opportunity. They need to wrap around and maybe drop a warden. Doing exactly that, but that's where the ping's coming from Toronto Tokyo. He has an idea that that's exactly where the Magnus is coming from. GPK, his yeah. silver edge is about to run out. Ooh, 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 what the? Ooh. <laughs> Now with the ages expiring, Stoke is still cool down for 30 seconds. You could go unnoticed, man. Yeah, but he doesn't have BKB. He can't jump oh, in. True. They'd react with the Yule, so that's a big issue. And, and maybe Yules it needs to be pit. squad to go. Rolling Thunder's up shortly, so maybe squad can create some chaos, but the buildings the are falling. There we go. Squad's going to start. FMG's going to be in as well. They use the Yule's and the RP. It's going to be there to follow up, but no one is getting the right clicks out. Finally, Kirin to in the middle. The man is getting drained, but dude, they gave the cheese. Oh! play from Bat Boom keeps Nightfall healthy and I notice was forced to buy back but FNG's in some trouble a toss inside the base helps secure the kill and yeah there's some well deserved tips beautifully done Bat Boom they're gonna reset a trip back to the well and they might go once again why not, right? Like, you, you already got a buyback out of them. There's no Dyer's RP. There's no Rolling Thunder. Does have a BKB, but without the Eclipse, I'm not even sure if the Luna's able to do it on her own. She would love to have that level 25 just for a little bit of that extra damage coming through in this next team fight. Won't quite have it, though. Still worried about the Magnus. That's how well Notice has been playing, but I think without, without this RP in his arsenal, he's just not going to be able to do it. Just use the illusions. Ed. Why not? They got Tombstone now. They got Flesh Golem. Ooh, great jump in. Dust into the middle of the meat 
Better Kiritich is not going to be able to survive for an instant use of the buyback, but they just reset. There was still a kill nonetheless on the GPK, so VP are able to find something, but that's still a heavy investment. Notice brought back for people to bunker inside of the tombstone Notice. as well. Notice. I think it's back and forth, my man. And there's the fall from GPK. No, it's going to be right with the BKB, but the turnaround with the RP connects onto the tiny with the He's damage. On. They should be able to bring him down, but Kuritich turned to story. Now Nightfall can pummel into the Luna. That's a dieback for her. Notice he's going to be killed off as well with no remorse. Is bet boom. Even though they lost GPK to start, it, it did not matter. And they should be able to walk it down now. They're not even going to wait for the potential of Roosh to spawn. Not sure what happened with Luna. I'm pretty sure in that fight I saw her have... I guess she bought the rapier, but it looked like she dropped something she before she even pick it up. It might be on the career or something? Oh, it might be on the car. Where is it? Uh, dead? I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 no. dead. Where is the courier, though? That's what I'm... <laughs> Yeah, because yeah, he absolutely had a free item slot before he died. He only swapped in, I want to say, the Manta after the death. <laughs> oh, no. oh, God. Dude, I'm, I'm scaring the map to try and find it. That's not going to matter, though. Dyer's middle tower. Yeah, this is a difficult defense at best. Try and do whatever they can. I mean, FNG is just shocking his life out. He's got to buy him back. We can try and tank some spells up. Put up the damage with the Mystic Flare and the Swashbuckle. Pure is going to die. It was a decent chunk user for just the kill onto Pure. And I mean, it means the rest of the can turn to just the ejectives. And with the throne exposed, there's not much VP going to be able to do. FNG once again is looking to try and make as much space as possible. 20 seconds. The Magnus is alive and you know, 20 seconds too long, unfortunate for them. Thorin's gonna end up getting blood. A lot of cares though for Zayush. Free kill for GPK. We saw what last game like a 10 minutes 20 blink timing and he's gonna be a little bit slow on that, but still it's gonna be a, a very good timing nonetheless from the tiny. I wanna continue the Topic about the item build from Curitage. It's going to be uh, maybe with the the Battle Fury in particular, even with the Magnus. I mean, we've seen Mags have been very, very greedy, and he might be the target of this smoke attempt. That boom has three heroes, a three hero smoke at eight minutes in. You don't see this often, but it looks like they're not going to find the reads to the wraparound behind the tower with a combination of the meta damage, if it's even needed, helps secure the kill. And Probably even the tower as well. I mean, they got two points in the tomb, so if Matt comes back, he's going to die again. GPK might still stick around, but they have huge stacks to take instead. Oh, my God. Squad's got the shield to be able to play with. I don't know who got the majority of those stacks. Did you see? Um, no, I didn't see. Radiant's top tower has fallen. But, I mean, tower, much more valuable, you'd have to say. Already a 4K net worth lead for Bet Boom at this stage, so squad might be very hard to kill at this point of the game, but yeah, they don't really care about him, right? It's what you do when you've got this hero that's unkillable. You just don't focus it until you feel like you are overly strong Holy as a team. Looking at pure farm? <laughs> no, I'm looking at goddamn GPK's farm. He's got a blanket. Oh, it's going to get delivered at 10. Really? I mean, that he was like 300 gold from his, so... <laughs> Uh, this is really scary territory for VP. These rotations have to start connecting from Squad X, and they might be able to catch up to going to Tokyo. So, look at the kill on to who are. Yeah, they got a little bit of magic, but the majority of it is physical. Mm, it makes it very, very hard for them. Deep attempt, but it's a pretty they nice skewer out of the tower, but it's really not going to count for anything. I even got another ward that scouts at FNG, so with the blink up in a couple of seconds, GPK's able to chase with ease. Kiritich's gonna have to 
Watch on the side lane as his position five gives another kill over to Bet Boom. No way they see him. Oh, far out. That was way too close. I mean, they'll gladly take a stack. They'll gladly stick around and make sure that they secure this Wisdom Rune as well in the next 30 seconds. And they've even got the tower pushing in as well. So Nightfall doesn't have the Metamorphosis, so he can't help out in that front. But any time that you're just forcing someone to, to come back here just to maybe push the wave out a little bit further, it's going to be a benefit for you. He goes too deep. Mm. Pure's just going to go for the blink ball. Oh, no. Looks like they're ready for it, though. And potentially even just maybe trying to get the wisdom rooms. That's going to be up shortly, but with the tombstone lady, and there's no way you take this fight. Maybe we're actually going to leave Tokyo, okay? I thought maybe they were going to try and play around with him with the advantage of the tombstone, but... Doesn't have that man to deliver just yet, so the fact that no one's defending against Tokyo is a little concerned. Smoke's going to pop over the Undyne, but at least they're going to drop the tombstone. Meanwhile, Pure's going to be in, but the RP's even better. It's on to three, but there's just no follow. Up. Even with an RP like that from notice, there is no one there to provide the damage required to turn that fight around. It was an opportunity. But in the end, the door gets slammed shut as soon as it was opened. It's bam, boom. Zero casualties from them, and now the tower is soon to be under siege. I mean, it's, it basically gives you almost permanent use out of that Berserker's Call, right? Playing together with the Coddle. Three second duration, reduce it by six seconds. That's why the tip was coming through from Pure onto save, despite the fact that the initial... That is, I think that is really being one of the big critiques for the Juggernaut as well. With... So what's going on mid lane? One second, FNG. Oh, great toss from GPK. And Abel Sans is going to be there to follow up as well. They've used a lot of the control, but still with the Avalanches possible to work with and GPK is up to a mega killing streak here for the tiny. I mean, it's by far the most important hero for them to be able to take out, right, is the Magnus. Notice, once again, he was able to hit a great RP and uh, was even able to skewer back the Undying, even though they didn't actually secure the kill. Because kind of more heroes inside the call. It's a very awkward spot to be taking a fight, though. Even GPK is readying the wings to try and fall up on someone else, but he'll just commit to get rid of FNG's life. And even just having the Ogre Seal totem as well, so you don't even need to rely entirely on the Blink Dagger Radiant for a lot of those kills. Is under attack. I wonder if they saw that uh, that haste rune, and that's why Pure is wanting to pick it up, just so that he can continuously run at people again. This combo, the Axe and the Keeper of the Light, really can't be understated how effective it is, is just having that uptime of the Berserker's Core. It basically gives you two seconds of downtime. Dyer's top tower has fallen. Does anyone on their Radiant's team have a... Tower has fallen. A, uh, what's it called? Ceremonial robe doesn't look like it. They do have two Ogre Seal totems and two Titan Snippers, though. Very balanced. We saw last game how difficult it was for Notice to be able to find the initiations on a high ground defense, and we'll see if it's going to be similar this game with the Tombstone laid down. With the meta set up as well. Bepu, Not a bad one, Ray. Silent save. Oh, he's on point. Instant use of the orchid. Stops him short and now pure. They're going to be able to get the core drag back. Squad X falling low inside it. Can he get the remnant out? They chop him down. Oh, pure, pure. Just some individual Bruins out of Bet Boom and we're able to crack the high ground. Full set of barracks down at bottom and I even look for more as well. I mean, this is where the advantage of having Toronto Tokyo on your team really comes in handy. Up at all, they made a bit of a jump here. It's just onto an illusion this time around. But uh, it, Toronto Tokyo obviously having played with well, what some people would say is the king of Magnus of these days in Collapse. He's like, all right, what did you hate playing against? Rubik is one, and you would have to say until he's got BKB, Orchid is the other. Great positioning by save, just making sure he's nowhere near the rest of the team and just spamming that Orchid on the ground next to the main targets. They, they made them. They, they made sure to clump together Nightfall and GPK in the one spot, just making it too good to be true. Fire out, it's Megas, dude. Yeah. Man. It, it's a tiny with Titan Sliver. You know, we can get patches, we can get new maps, but some things never change. Yeah, it's going to be a tiny look to try and get some more kills as well. <laughs> Down FNG. Pure is going to be able to run into the sky. A dunk to take away the life. Nice side set from Pure. So what they're going to be able to do one last defense. What a damage on a pure. So able to find an opportunity to pop the BKB and look to turn, but the banishment's going to be able to keep Squadex alive for the moment. Yeah, the meta two seconds. Yeah, the meta's pretty uh, unbeatable at this yeah. point. 
Did you see the TV? They're going to be looking at Nightfall. No, he doesn't have that Aegis on him. There's the target. There's a smoke here. Fuel wants to go that long wrap around. There he is. That's an RP just onto the tiny. They're going to be able to drop the Omni Slash, but he's got the Aegis. Two ultimates. Just for an Aegis of the Immortal. It's going to mean that this second game will be going the way of a bad boom. And they're going to be up to 2 and 0. Well, the debut of Virtus Pro in the Summer Tour is not the debut they would be hoping to remember. And seems like.